Firstly, the scientific officer examines a t-shirt with a crime light to highlight anything that may not be visible to the naked eye, such as fibres or bodily fluid. This highlights areas where DNA may be most accessible. The next procedure is a DNA tape lift. The scientific officer takes samples from around the collar and arms where the light has shown some hot spots to be. He then places his subsample into a tube, barcodes it, and sends it to Queensland Health Forensic Scientific Services. I'm here in the photographics department and I'm just about to meet Sergeant Paul Cracknell. The images have come back from the crime scene and are ready to be stitched together to create a virtual walkthrough using some very special software. In this particular um, presentation we have an aerial map. This gives us a relationship to the streets uh, surrounding uh, where the crime has occurred. We also then have a plan view which is a view of, in this particular instance, the location of the house and the layout within the house. Once we have the plan view, we can then, uh, it's, it's a matter of positioning each one of the nodal points onto the map here, uh, so that uh, we're then able to access each area just by clicking on each one of these nodal points. Once we then go in through a nodal point, as you can see here, we, then can, then, we can then see a 360 by 180 degree view of the actual crime scene area. This then links on, and we're able to link through to the next nodal point, so that we're just stepping through the crime scene. Who will the final output be useful to? Our interactive uh, presentations are useful for our investigators, particularly early on in the investigation, so immediately at the crime scene we can record uh, our nodes, put them together, uh, in a very rudimentary style and then present those to the investigators so they have some idea of what the crime scene looks like, say inside the house for this particular matter. The other thing is that we uh, can use the uh, interactive crime scene then for court purposes where we present it to court uh, which basically gives a representation of how the crime scene looked without actually having to take the jury and court members out to a scene to see it. Is this software used specifically for forensics purposes and are other states and countries using it? The software and equipment that we use is specific to our forensic purposes. Uh, other states uh, use different equipment, which I'm not particularly familiar with. Uh, however, this is specific to uh, forensic crime scene and the purposes that we use it for within the state of Queensland. But before this case is ready for court, I'm going to visit the Queensland Health Forensic Scientific Services Labs, or QHFSS, to see if there was a match on any of the evidence that we sent there for analysis. I've come to Queensland Health Forensic Scientific Services Laboratories in South Brisbane, where all the evidence required for DNA analysis has been sent. I'm meeting with the managing scientist of the DNA analysis unit, who is going to take me through the process and see what will result. What forensic services are carried out here that can't be done at QPS Labs? Our laboratory specialises in DNA analysis, so our expertise is in obtaining a DNA profile from any samples that are delivered to us if there's DNA present, such as crime scene samples or person samples. How long has DNA testing been a standard part of forensic sciences and how does the analytical process compare with what was used originally? We've been producing results for short tandem repeat analysis since 1998 and the advances have been in the technology such as the equipment that we use, it's become more sensitive, we can also take advantage of robotic or automated equipment which then helps us batch together more samples to push those results through faster. So here's an example of a DNA profile. If you imagine that the DNA profile is a very, very long street, we look at nine different locations along that street and collect that information and pull that into what we call a DNA profile. We also collect information which indicates gender. So you can, that's the only depictable thing that you can tell about a DNA profile is that it could be attributed to a male or a female. The other parts of the DNA profile don't tell us anything about the physical characteristics of a person. Once a DNA profile has been generated for a crime scene sample, we then compare that against any reference or person samples for that particular case. 
what we're looking for is to ensure that that same DNA profile from the crime scene profile is matching against that person sample supplied for that particular case. We then verify whether they do match or not, and a scientist will enter those results into our computer system. A peer reviewer will then come along and verify that those results are correct prior to send them, sending them across the interface in real time, contemporaneously. So what are the results pertaining to this case? We obtained a DNA profile from the cigarette butt and that matched with the profile we obtained from the suspect's reference sample. For the two trace DNA swabs, we also obtained DNA profiles which matched each other and also matched with the suspect's profile. And we obtained a DNA profile from the blood swab which matched with the complainant's reference sample. How does this cooperative workflow between Queensland Police Service and Queensland Health Forensic Scientific Services compare on a national scale? Queensland was the first jurisdiction to start using the National DNA Database, NSIT. Queensland's also the first and so far only jurisdiction to start exchanging information electronically, both about case histories and also results, DNA results. And also Queensland's the only jurisdiction to use the subsampling model. However, I believe that other jurisdictions are also starting to look into this as well. Let's summarise what evidence was found and what happened as a result. A screwdriver was found at the scene with blood on the blade and a partial fingerprint on the handle. It was sent to the QPS forensic branch. Ballistic analysis showed that the screwdriver was a tool used to break into the house, but the fingerprint analysis using the superglue technique returned an unidentifiable result. A number of fingerprints that were found were transmitted from the scene directly to QPS. At the Fingerprints Bureau, images of the fingerprints were uploaded to the NAFIS, that is the National Automated Fingerprint Identification System, which identified a number of matching candidates. Next, Senior Sergeant Cook from the scientific section identified the type of shoe from impressions left at the crime scene. This enabled the police to search the suspect's home and take him into custody when they found a shoe of the right type. The shoe was then forensically examined for any other physical evidence. DNA from the t-shirt and cigarette butt was then sent to the QHFSS laboratories. Now let's summarise the results of the analyses. At the Queen's Unhealth Lab, there was a positive match from the DNA on the cigarette butt with that of the suspect in custody. There was another positive match to the same man which came from the trace DNA on the shirt, as well as the DNA from the fingerprint obtained from the window. Finally, the blood on the tip of the screwdriver was a positive match to that of the complainant. I'm here at the Brisbane Courthouse. It's been six months since the evidence has been compiled by the Queensland Health and Queensland Police Services. This case is ready to be trialled. Let's go and see if we can't close this. Your Honour, the Crown's case will prove that on the 23rd day of November 2011 at 21 Malawi Street, Albion in the state of Queensland, one Joe Smith, the defendant in this matter, did murder Alan Perry. Mr Perry, the complainant in this matter, was an elderly gentleman asleep in his home when he was awoken by noises. The complainant, whilst attempting to investigate these noises, was viciously attacked and stabbed twice in the chest and abdomen by a masked offender. The complainant in this matter subsequently died of his injuries at the Royal Brisbane Hospital. Forensic evidence located irrefutably places the defendant at the scene of the crime. When all evidence is considered, Your Honour, only one conclusion can be drawn. Mr Smith murdered Mr Perry and forensic evidence will irrefutably prove this. So the next time you watch a police or forensics TV show, think about what's real and think about what's exaggerated. Queensland Forensic Services use a cost-effective mix of homegrown ingenuity and the best technology that's available from around the world. They're recognised nationally and internationally as a world leader for the development and provision of forensic services. Through QPS, this show has given us an inside look and how forensics and scientific techniques are being used to better assist the police and solve crimes in our community today. Well, I hope you found that really intriguing. Next week, we look at women making their mark in science at the Women in Technology Awards. And don't forget that you can find out more info on the website 31.com.au nswk. Let us know what you think. Good night. <laughs>